All right, so this is recording now. Do you guys still have FCE? They had an FCE. I just wanted to give you a heads up if you have FCE. So apparently they have, you guys might have an FCE coming up and there's some sample questions on here. Um, they didn't have to review this as much in the 103X, but just heads up that you might be having this coming up. All right, on Markov chains, let me make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go pretty systematically through this. And Markov chains is a step-by-step -step process. They're listed out, we learned in the first time I taught MA103 when I came back, follow the objectives. And the objectives are that you should be able to um, create the transition matrix and model the probability of moving from one state to the next state. That's what I'm gonna to cover today, that first objective. I think, yeah, so the other two have not. This first one I am. So this is straight from your modeling book. And straight from your web assign. To ask if you guys still do web assign. Yes, you do web assign, right? Okay, so um, the story here is that you have, and I don't have any problems sharing this with you because the red is all gonna change for you. Um, but the story here is that you have um, three states in the US economy, a bull, bear, or recession. And this is modeling something that's gonna happen over time. So it's still the DDS that you guys have been working on so far. They just call this a Markov chain. Um, so on this uh, bull bear, the arrows in the figure represent that each year in the economy can transition from one state to the other. So you move from one state to the other state by some kind of probability. So the first thing here is that you're given three states, and those states are the bull, bear, and recession states. So you can imagine if someone's going to ask a question, the first thing they could give you is a, a story problem like this and ask you what this, how many states are there and what are they? So this is how you identify. This picture typically was not given in any assessment. Those pictures you have to create yourself. So far so good? So the first step in working out this, and we're gonna go for the transition matrix. The first step is to mark up that diagram. So I ask all of you to draw this diagram with the arrows on a sheet of paper so you can mark it down. So I'm gonna slow down so people can catch up with writing. <laughs> Right, we're good? Everybody have it down? You have to write down the word problem because you're going to find that back on your web assign. So the word problem will be there with some numbers changed to protect the innocent. All right, so where do these numbers come from and how do you mark up the model? Um, so the first is that they say, can you see this? Can you guys see it from the back? Blow it up a little bit. They give you some information, and basically the idea is where do you put that information on that chart. The first thing they tell you is that in the bull economy, there's a 20% chance that the next year will be a bear economy. So what you do is you go to the arrow that's going out of the bull economy to the bear economy, and you put 0.20 there. So guys in this state have a 20% chance of transitioning to this state. That's why they call it a transition matrix. And likewise, there's a 5% chance the next year will be a recession. So, um, the 5% goes from the bull to the recession. They've left out some words here, right? From the bull to the, I needed to hear that. That's why I kind of paused for a second. All right, what I'd like you to do is fill in the next pieces of information where you think it could go in a pencil. So you're allowed to make mistakes and erase that if you need to. 
blow this up. It's um when I put it on a like a full screen view, it doesn't like it. It won't record at the same time. But so you're gonna have to ask me like for snippets so you can see. So it's fine if you get, you get this incorrect. Like this is not this is like the fair method inside the class itself. You get a chance to try something, and then we'll check and see if it's correct. So if I go down to the next green piece, 30% chance that from a bear that you become a bull. So point 30 goes this way, up here this way. And then they tell you that there's a 15% chance for recession. So the point 15 would go this way. And the black part, there's a 45% chance the next year will be a bear economy and a 10% chance it'll be a bull economy, and then you put those same black pieces where you know, you're moving 45% <coughs> um, chance of the next year going this way, and then 10% chance you're going this way. Okay, good? So again, keep in mind that on any assessment question you have, that diagram won't be there. So you have to create the whole diagram. And what I remember is stuff is left off because I didn't give you information. There's another problem that you guys have with some computer thing and they leave information off and you don't have this diagram. And so that's the biggest problem is creating the diagram. So this is kind of like they've given you some of the stuff to begin with. Okay, so what are my three states? Right? So I just labeled them. Why did I label them? Because on WebAssign, it's pre-ordered. You have to enter it the way they want you to. So I had to kind of figure out, back calculate which one was state one, which one was state two, and which one state three. And then they have these arrows that go into themselves. So what goes there? So bold percent that leave out, the out arrows, is 25%. If I count them. Right, so if I look at this bull one, there's, and look at what's going out, there's 5% that goes out this way and 20% that goes out this way. And that gives me 25%. What does that mean, what's left? 75%. So 75% remained in there, and so 75% would go on that one. And these little things that go into themselves, that's the one thing that cadets miss. Like if you're going to mess up this problem, it's going to be forgetting to put the ones that go into themselves. And so you do it for each one of them. So now fill in all the rest of them. I think I got your bear one already done here. But fill in all the rest of the ones that go into themselves. So make me go, make you go to the boards. I can make you go to the boards. And hand release push-ups at the same time. Two birds with one stone. You guys want to go to the boards? Actually, you look tired. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Well. Right. I don't know. I don't want to get pushed up here. But doesn't, we did it. I, doesn't I it tell us that the bull is the A sub A so like and then three. the bear is the uh, sitting in there? What's the max? Uh, yeah, so yeah. State, state one is Oh, okay. Right. So the numbers were flipped on the last slide. They might have been. Go ahead. Question? Yes, how do you decide which is state one, state two, and state three? So they tell you here, right here, that um, the, the AN is the bull, the PN is the um, bear, and the CN is the recession. So that, that's going to be the issue in any word, uh, web assign problems. They have to do it that way because you have to enter it one way, and it's not flexible. It's only a problem for web assign. Yes, but how will we be able to tell on the test? You won't, you, it doesn't matter how you put it because you get to decide that. Okay. 
right? So if I'm modeling this problem on my own, I would just get to decide that. It's not up to. And so the math all comes out the same in the end. But because you have to enter like pieces of it into web assignment, it matters here. Okay, so you should have got 55% on the bear. Um, let's see, 45% on the recession and 75% on the bull. Right? Now you're going to form what's called the transition matrix. So that's step two. I think this is easier with equations first. Um, so that's how I did it. Maybe you guys don't think so, but um, somewhere along the lines, I know that you guys get counted for, and I, I like to label things not with A ends, B ends, and C ends. Like I like to label it with what it's called. I didn't used to, but my husband's a programmer, and he used to ask me, what, why do you have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4? Why do you have them all subscriptive like that? What do these things mean? Well, that one means this, and this one means this. Why? You just call it what it means. So bull end means the probability of being in a bull state in year end after 2015. You'll have to do this. I, I remember these, taught this four years ago last. So I remember that, that you guys had to do this, right? Define your variables. <laughs> So to me, it's easier just to kind of see where these things come from by labeling them. So this is not any different than the linear systems that you had, which you understood fully, right? All right, so then let me um, blow this one up so you can see it. I'm going to form the equations for the bull equation. So if I go up here and I look at this picture again, let's see. Right here. So if I look at this equation, I'm, if I look at bull, 75% remain inside bull. So 75% of the bulls stay there. And then 20%, um, 30% are coming in from bear. So this would be bear sub n minus 1. I forgot how you guys do it. Do you go n and n minus 1? Yeah. I always just drive me crazy. So n and n minus 1. I have a problem with indices. So this should be bear n minus 1, recession n minus 1. Typically the way you do it is n plus 1 and n. So that's why we're going to get turned around. So there's... 30% bear, N minus 1 would come this way. 10% recession would come this way. So I put 10% recession, N minus 1 would be the subscript. So sorry for that. So I take in all my in arrows, and they would go in. And then it would be, so it would be bear, N, 0.20 bull n minus 1, 0.55 bear n minus 1, 0.45 recession n minus 1. The way you guys probably know this better than I do. And I'm just doing the same thing, and I've marked it up here at the top with yellow so you can see what, where I'm getting those numbers from. You a morning person? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen such a happy flea. <laughs> What's happened here? I don't know, man. Right now, My son didn't smile at all last year. Not at once. But he's happy now, so there's hope. He's the corporal, right? <laughs> so that's what's going into that second equation, so it's yellows. Tell me if I need to slow down or back up a slide if you're still taking notes. <laughs> you guys are good? Yeah. 
And there's all my stuff with the wrong indices. The last one would be 0 0.05 full n minus 1 plus 0.15 bare n minus 1 plus 0.45 recession n minus 1. So now you have your three equations. And now it's just the simulation button go as you guys have done before. Now you have the equations, you just put the matrix the way you had it. So the biggest pitfall here is not getting this from going, not drawing the things on the diagram the way you're supposed to, and then not being able to go to the equations. Once you have got the equations, you, it's the same old, same old matrix. The transition matrix is that matrix that you come up with. All right, let's look at that, what that looks like. Yeah, question? Because it's probabilities, but it's the same thing as you've done before. It's like, you know, um, I again remember this computer problem that you have in this section. So if you guys, I'll, I'll put my number up here if you guys have an issue with that computer problem. I don't know when the web assign is due, but that one is a little weird because they don't give you all the information. You kind of have to decipher it from the word problem. It's stuck in my mind, so it's something in there. And so here's the matrix, what it looks like. Transition matrix. You just take those coefficients and you put them all in there. And 103x that I had last time, they didn't listen to me. They didn't write down those equations, and then they got them wrong on, on we have WPRs. I don't know if you guys still have WPRs, but it's up WPRs, right? Yes, then I see it back, like, you guys didn't listen to me. If you write the equations, that thing is easy. Good? You stay up too late? You? Yeah. No, her, because she's just standing tired. So I'll tell you from my distribution curves that I showed from my Garmin for my 206. I love teaching 206. Um, so I got to show them stuff off my, Fit, my Fitbit type things, Garmin. And I exercise 99% better than the rest of the nation that wears garments. Stairs, 97%. You guys should be through the roof for stairs here. And I said, I'm not going to show them the sleep one. The sleep one, I'm not going to show them because they also record your sleep. <laughs> that one is just for myself. I'm pretty sure it's not. It's it's bad. The sleep one's bad. Yeah. All right, so what goes... I'm going through this web assign because the, the, my memory of this, and also I helped a, a plead last year with this, was what do you put in these things? Because there's these blanks. Um, so um, write down P0. P0 is the initial state. They told you that the initial state you're, um, is a bull state. So that means you are 1 here, 0, 0, and 0 here. And so that's what goes into here. And I don't remember if you have to do the little thingies when you put it in there. <coughs> OK. Sometimes it doesn't do it, but I must have written it like that because I looked at it and saw that it is. But I don't remember. It was four years ago. OK, and my Mathematica password's not in, so I'm going to show you screenshots of what I did in Mathematica. And I will send you the Mathematica template that I did to generate this. So I'll just shoot it out as an email. If I forget, send, somebody send me an email. It's diana.thomas at westpoint.edu. Send me an email and I'll send it to the class. Um, yeah, I did it in, I wrote inside the actual thing so that you can actually see in red. You, this is what this does. This is what this does. So we, we modified our templates for our class. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, what do you want next? They want to know in uh, C3, so you iterate it. Three steps and look at the third component because it's A, B, C. And so um, this is straight off your Mathematica if you have the template. Step one, I have it C steps, like what you're supposed to type. So we did this after a back and forth in the class. So it was the students themselves that designed this. And so um, enter the initial condition. And then you have to put in the A, the matrix, and, um, and then you do the third iterate. So I think this is the same old, same old you've already done. And you find that that third iterate is, probably you can't see this, but 0.11425, that's what goes in there. 
Your numbers will be all different. But it just matches up to what the Mathematica file, what you're doing. <laughs> now you're getting tired. <laughs> as soon as I said Mathematica, she's like. <laughs> and then, go ahead. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I know I'm breathing through this. Now, um, they want P50, so you iterate to 50 steps. And you do this. And they want the whole thing. So they want this thing. So um, if you are rounding as any go along, you guys know this, right? You round a little bit. WebAssign doesn't like it. So you have to be a little careful with all this. So what do they want next? They want the equilibrium value. Um, you row reduce the augmented matrix. And I think they had questions of why. Do you guys remember why? Like that's how you find the um, P star. So uh, same note to you guys. If you don't, if you want to ask me this offline, shoot me an email, and I'll send you back some notes. And can you pull up? I just saw that you just had there. Where did I switch? Where did you do math? I could like where did you start? Um, I'll send the. This is actually being recorded, and I'll send these slides to you as well, okay. and the Mathematica template, which I can't open anymore because I haven't got my password. All right. But I'll send that to you. But somebody has to remind me because I'll go back to my office and forget. Okay. See, now you know I'm old. <laughs> that part didn't stay like stay intact. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, if you write it like that equation thing, it's the exact same thing you've done before. Okay, so um, this is how we did it in class. I minus the A, I don't know how you guys did it, and then row reduce the augmented matrix, and then um, the thing that you had at the end. Yeah, so you had to solve this thing, and then um, must have given it to you. Yeah, there's some hand notes on that. I don't know how you guys have been doing it, um, but the way we did it, like I, I told you, I had an X section, so they were, we would take this matrix out and solve for it by hand. I don't know, is that, that what you guys do? So you take that, the first, you only have two equations, done, done, right? This is probably where I need to slow down. So this is the first equation, this is the second equation. So I wrote them down here with A's and B's and C's because I'm solving for the steady state, the equilibrium value. So I got this. I'm not now using the letters they have because I want it to transfer to my web assign. So I'm task oriented. it. Okay, so far so good. You just see me peeling off the, I don't know how you guys have been doing it in class, but you peel off the equation number one, A plus zero B minus three, blah, 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 C is equal to zero. Zero A plus one B minus this thing is equal to zero. So peel those things off as equations. And then you solve for A in terms of C and B in terms of C because C is in both of them. So this is how you guys have been doing it. And C star is what we call free, because I'm allowed to plug in whatever I want from it, and then A and B are defined. And then, so I get this guy. A is the first thing, B is the second thing, and C is the third thing, free. And you peel out the C from outside. C. You put that into vector form, and then these components must add up to one. So you force them to add up to one, each of the components. I don't know if you've done this too, but this thing has to add up to one, and you do high school algebra. Actually, it's middle school algebra now. My daughter's in seventh grade and doing this. But in my day, it was in high school. So you solve for the C by taking all of these and adding them to one. So that, that I don't have as a step, that should be a step. That's how you solve for that free variable. 
You take that vector, you total up to one, there's only one letter left in all of them, and you solve for that one letter. Good? Each step by itself is fine. It's like when you put it all together, that's nutty. And so I get this, and you just plug, plug that back in. This is what I got after I did the math. And I, I didn't want to compute it, but I, the, I was tired of decimal signs. No. But whatever, I, I think you can actually put it as times. It might work. But I don't know how many tries you have. How many tries do you guys have for a web assign? No. Okay. If you're lazy like me, you can just leave it as times and see if it'll take it. Say it again. Louder. No, um, this is the equilibrium value, and this was something else. Yeah, like that, that equal in Mathematica, at least for this particular problem. Yeah, because this one was, I think you guys did for your linear algebra part that if the eigenvalues of the matrix were less than one, it converges to the state, to the equilibrium value. You guys do something like that? Yeah. All right, the last part, um, let me show you the question. I remember they didn't like these things. What is the largest eigensystem value of the transition matrix? Well, you know what to do. Take that transition matrix, punch it into Mathematica, tell it eigensystem, and then the largest I got was one. And so the largest eigenvalue is one, and I put that in there. That one wasn't on our website. Huh? That wasn't on our website. They might have scratched them just four years ago. So the firsties that you have in your company now, they were my students back four years ago. Yeah, you need it for this stuff. You absolutely need it to do this, otherwise I, you can't do it. Um, I have a separate couple templates that's just for cranking out the eigen systems. And there's no way in my mind that you can actually really learn the eigen stuff in such a short packed thing. The reason you're learning it, for being recorded, is for ABET. They want it as a requirement for the engineering schools. So, but it does help you here. So the idea is that if we show you how to crank it through Mathematica, then you can get these values and then you know what to do with them. So I have a separate spreadsheet. So are you going to email me? If you email me, then I'll send you guys back as a class the template for eigensystems, how to find it, and then because it has all the directions in there. OK, when do you guys end? 55. 10. 10. 10. 10. All right, why don't you guys open this web assign? And I'm going to put this on YouTube now and send you guys the slides. I go send you everything, the Mathematica file, the slides, everything, and then crank through this first problem and see if you can get through it. So imagine, you don't need me to email you now. I think I'll remember since I'm standing here. Awesome. What would you like us to do if we already did the website now? Check it.